In sports, as in life, there are lands in which the glory of victory seems to spring eternal. Places where championships flow like water, and the joys of celebration are as regular as the changing of seasons. But there are also lands which lay desolate, in places where the vines of sport lurch limping lifelessly out of a salted, poisoned earth, producing only the bitter fruit of continual failure and disappointment. And the names of these lands are known by many. Cleveland. Cincinnati, Detroit, Chicago, Midwest, Blue Collar, nothing that resembles an ocean, a fashionable way of living, or even prosperity. Victories here are few, and their prospects for sport and life are so rare that these lands bear the moniker, the Rust Belt. Rust. Noun. A corrosive agent that erodes what was once refined. Rust. Verb. To deteriorate or become impaired. What once stood proud and glorious has been eroded by time and reduced to a decrepit shell of what once was. And when it comes to sports, I can think of no greater example of this than the cities of Chicago and Detroit. The Chicago Bears currently hold the number one pick in the NFL draft in April, where they are expected by many to take quarterback Caleb Williams. They are also expected to trade current starting quarterback Justin Fields, who they drafted in the first round just three years ago. Fields has been mostly underwhelming, and yet... If he never takes another snap for the Bears, he will still be, statistically, the 10th greatest quarterback in the team's 104-year history. Fields was drafted to replace Mitch Trubisky, who the Bears took with the second overall pick four years prior. Trubisky, who also underperformed, is still the 5th greatest quarterback in team history. Conversely, in the last month, the city of Detroit celebrated not just a college football national championship by the Michigan Wolverines, but a surprise run to the NFC championship by their historically hapless Detroit Lions. But you need to listen to me, because these are nothing but mushrooms growing in the graves of the dead. Detroit, like Chicago, is a long-dead city. Now, you may say, well, so what? There are far worse situations in places like Cleveland and the like, but what I haven't covered yet is just how thoroughly this decay has gone. How the tendrils of rot have rooted themselves in the earth itself, rendering the lands of Chicago and Detroit a wasteland for athleticism. After winning two of their first three games, the Detroit Pistons embarked on a losing streak so unbelievable that the word historic somehow undersells it. On October 8th, the Pistons beat the Chicago Bulls, one of the few NBA teams bad enough to lose to Detroit, 118-102. Detroit then proceeded to not win another game until December 30th when they capped off a 27-game losing streak by squeaking out a win against the Toronto Raptors, 129-127. They went 63 days, more than two months, without winning a a single game. The Detroit Pistons are obviously dead last in the standings, just like they were dead last in the standings last year. The year before, they managed to finish one game ahead of dead last, but this came after another year of being dead last. The year before that, they were, again, one game ahead of being dead last, making it a full five years since they were more than one game away from being the absolute worst. Many are arguing that the 2024 Detroit Pistons are the worst professional sports team of all time and in any sport. And yet, somehow, not even this captures the depths of erosion found in Detroit or Chicago. Because the thing about professional athletes is that, at least early in their career, they don't get to choose the team they play for. They're drafted, and in almost every instance, you play for the team that took you. At least until you hit free agency, when you can begin to play a hand in your next destination. But before any of that can occur, a young athlete must decide the school at which his talents will be showcased. And this is where we find just how profoundly rotten places like Chicago and Detroit have become. Because while student athletes have more agency over their amateur careers than ever before, many retain that instinctive level of pride one has for the places they call home. Or at least they do if they don't grow up in and around Chicago or Detroit. Because while Chicago and Detroit are both hotbeds for young basketball talent, as soon as these men are given the opportunity to leave, they bolt as far away as their talents will take them. This is the University of DePaul. It is the second largest college in the city of Chicago, and their basketball team, the DePaul Blue Demons, play in the Big East, a conference which includes the defending national champions and current number one team in the country, the Yukon Huskies. So, with the city of Chicago being one of the biggest and most successful breeding grounds for young basketball talent, and a permanent seat in one of college basketball's most prestigious conferences, it shouldn't take much effort to consistently recruit a competitive basketball team. Should it?
Here are the 2024 DePaul University Blue Demons. Here's their 10,000 seat arena, which never reaches half of its capacity for Blue Demon games. After opening their season with home losses to the Fort Wayne Mastodons and Long Beach State 49ers, they managed to notch a couple wins against the South Dakota Coyotes, a historically bad Louisville team whose roster consists of emergency transfers, and a Chicago State team that is currently the only Division I basketball team that doesn't belong to any conference. So they're basically a homeless team. Then DePaul just kind of put it in park. They are currently dead last in the Big East without a single conference win and almost assuredly will not get one for the rest of the year. And yet still, we have not reached the absolute bottom. In order to do that, we need to head over to the city of Chicago's brother in misery, Detroit. This is the University of Detroit, the largest and only Division I school in the city of Detroit. There is no competition. Sure, the most talented basketball players in the state will always choose Michigan and Michigan State over the University of Detroit, but as their third option, there should still be enough talent left to choose from, right? Wrong. So very horribly, inexplicably wrong. The Detroit Titans have not won a single game all year, and I don't think you understand just how unbelievable that truly is. See, in college basketball, you play your conference schedule, and those games and their dates and times are all dictated by the conference you belong to. But outside of that, you can schedule basketball games against whoever you want, and they'll count towards your record, provided they are against an officially recognized college. Want to play a game against a Division III Christian school? Sure, it counts. The University of Maryland Eastern Shore, a college with less than 3,000 students, did that when they played Philadelphia Biblical University. So did Delaware State when they scheduled a game against Gwynedd Mercy College. But for Detroit's only Division I college basketball team, there is no equal. There was simply no one out there that was bad enough at the game of basketball. And that's sad. Because for the basketball talent growing up in and around Detroit or Chicago, the ones that aren't quite good enough to be a Wolverine or Spartan, a Illini or Wildcat, they would rather be literally anywhere else, play for any college, as long as it isn't in Detroit or Chicago.